so, you know, we're all down here on earth and, you know, we have uh, what we call this freedom of religion and, you know, we're all Christians and this is the Christian community in many respects and we hear all this controversy about being a Christian community. So is hell. <laughs> but I have another story that I heard a while ago and there was a young lady who died in a car accident and she goes up to heaven and she sees St. Peter and he says, oh, welcome to heaven. I see you're a Methodist. I'll follow, follow me to your room, but when you pass room two, be quiet. So she goes in and she goes into room seven and there's a whole bunch of Methodists there and they're happy to see her. And then another accident happens and a group of Mormons die. And they go up to heaven. And St. Peter sees them coming to the gate. He says, welcome to heaven. I see your Mormons. You have room 17. Uh, please follow me. I'll escort you to your room. But when you go by room 2, be quiet. And they go to room 17. And there's a whole bunch of Mormons there. And then this other poor man dies at age 88. And he was Lutheran. And he goes up to heaven. And St. Peter says, ah, welcome. You've had a good long life. I want you to go to room three, but when you go by room two, please be quiet. Don't make any noise. And he escorts him to room three. And then a Jewish lady passes away. And she goes up to heaven and he says, ah, welcome to heaven. Room six, but when you pass room two, you gotta be really quiet. So as she's going to room six, they pass room two, and she goes to St. Peter and says, St. Peter, why do I have to be quiet going past room two? And he says, shh, it's for the Catholics. They think they're the only ones here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, heaven is big. There are herds of millions of buffalo. The Native Americans used to ride their ponies on to play tag with. Yes, there are recreational activities and some sports, but few have proven difficult to sponsor in the afterlife. Baseball is one example. A lot of folks were interested in playing since they have no worries about rainouts. But the rules had to be modified and people kind of lost interest in playing under the restrictions. You see, hidden is frowned upon and stealing isn't permitted at all. It kind of took the fun out of the game and they gave up. Now, one of the other parts is this, that history and religion and politics are something that are eternal and I enjoy coming around to this part of life to see what's going on in the politics in today's world I think that's what keeps Mark Twain alive in us all because he railed against politics he railed against the established religions and so did George Carlin <laughs> another good comedian and then what I was impressed at was that the Mark Twain award given out by the Kennedy Center for humor was awarded to George Carlin several years ago. Most recently to Tina Fey, another one, Richard Pryor even got one. And this is something that down in Washington DC they give an award to in honor of a fictitious person. Because there's not too many politicians that I would trust giving an award to these days. Uh, but I think also Mr. Twain and Mr. Obama have something in common. Mr. Twain was, would be really amazed, and I know Samuel Clemens would be amazed, that we had actually a black man elected as president of this country. And Mr. Obama, who's ready to be moved out of his office after eight full years of serving as our president, made one comment that I thought was interesting. He said, if Donald Trump is elected president, 
going to be the first time in history a billionaire is going to take over a publicly supported housing unit <laughs> occupied by a black family. <laughs> Maybe we have to be careful about who we vote for. I actually was very surprised to find myself voting in the Democratic primary for a person who is an avowed socialist. Ah, but I think we all are looking for some change. And God bless us with politics. They're going to fight it to the death, and I just don't understand why they don't get the facts right. The only president that could not blame this country's troubles on the previous administration was George Washington. <laughs>